Welcome back to Real House DIY. If you got an older gas boiler like this, you can actually run this during a power outage without any electricity. I'll show you how to do that today. First of all, the reason you probably can't do this on a newer system that has the PVC vent pipe with a fan, that fan is used to get the exhaust out of the building on this older system that's less energy efficient yeah, it still has some heat in the exhaust and it naturally drafts and goes out the chimney. So this does not have a fan built in, so no electricity need th needed there. So the newer systems, maybe you have a battery backup to keep it running, but this, this one does not have a fan, does not require battery backup. The other thing that uses power on this older system, you have the circulator pumps that uses electricity to run the pump and circulate water through the baseboard radiators. We have one, two, three for each of the three zones. So we're basically gonna bypass using these circulator pumps and it'll essentially run like an older system where you don't have the circulator pumps and the heat from the boiler just naturally rises up to the floors above. Then as that heat radiates upstairs, that cooler water will make its way back down here to be heated again. The specific boiler I have is the 100 series gas boiler. It's made by Crane, it has Honeywell controls. I don't have the manual for this. This is from the 1970s. I'm sure it was lost at some point, but they thankfully have this nice uh, wiring diagram schematic here. The line voltage is going to power your circulator pumps and your thermostat when you call for heat. It's gonna trip this relay, close here, and that tells the burner to turn on. And right here you can see it says auto manual switch. That's part of what we're going to, uh, to work on to get this running in continuous circulation mode. And you can see right here it says self-generating control system, continuous or intermittent circulation. And this is the Honeywell L8148G. Essentially what we're going to do so just pretend the power is off so your circulator pump will not run. And we're going to close this switch here. Forget about the relay because you're not going to have power to run the transformer and be able to close the relay. Take the thermostats upstairs out of the equation. You won't be turning the thermostats on or off during a power outage. And then here, when we close this switch, it's going to tell the burner to run and everything else is out of the equation. And that switch is inside this box right here. So right here on the side of this box, got the switch says auto manual. Unfortunately for me, the switch is broken. When you switch this, the burn burner should automatically turn on. You'll be able to hear it. You can take a look at them and see that the burners are on. For me, that doesn't work. So right now I'll show you how to manually get that switch turned on. Just has one screw on the top here just need to loosen it to get the cover off. So here's your transformer, here's your relay. Moving that switch, if that's not working, just take your screwdriver, put it right here to get the relay to manually close and we'll be able to hear the burners turn on. And then we can you can hear those burners running. Take this off and we'll hear them turn off. Or essentially back to the pilot light, low burner operation. Let's get that cover back on. Also, if we do have the switch where you can cut off power to the boiler. Right here. However, if you're looking at the circuit here, you, you really don't need to turn off that switch when you lose power. Or even right now, if I wanted to run it in the manual mode, you don't need to turn that off. It's basically with this uh, switch closed or the relay closed in manual mode, you're gonna have the burners running. If power is called from the thermostat, you'll know that power is back on because your circular pumps will, will run and you'll hear that that heat going through the baseboard radiators.
do the circulator pump running. And while you're running this in manual mode, you're gonna want to be uh, watching this um, very carefully until you get a hang of how it runs. You, you really don't want this to go above 180 degrees, at least on mine, it typically runs at 180 degrees. When the heat is off, this is going down to like 100, 120 degrees. So during a power outage, you may be down here quite a bit, making sure that this stays nice and stable, you know, turning the switch or manually getting the re turning the relay on and off. And you're focusing on just keeping your house warm, not running your boiler really hot. And the last important thing that your system may, may or may not have on mine, if you follow any of these pipes up, You'll find right here, we have a check valve. And we actually have three of those. There's one there and two more up here. Basically those check valves only open while the circulator pump is running and pushing water through the valve. It opens at a certain pressure for, from that water being pushed. The whole reason for that is say it's summertime, you still have the burner running with the pilot light, so there's some heat being generated. And in the summer, you don't want that hot water being circulated upstairs, getting heat when you don't actually want it. It's fine down here in the basement, but you do, in the summer, you do not want any heat upstairs. So those check valves are gonna prevent heat from getting upstairs when the circulator pump is not running. So on my system, you do need to open the three check valves. And with those open, it's, it's essentially as if the valve is not there, it's just a straight pipe, lets the hot water move freely upstairs if it wants to and cooler water move back downstairs. And I do have one circulator pump which is for a basement zone that one does not have a check valve on it you won't get any hot water moving through the basement zone without the circulator pump actually running so my two upstairs zones have a circular pump here and the other one over here those two have the check valves on the pipe and then the remaining pipe which returns to the boiler that gets the third check valve and just show you, you can take a look at the burners. Just this panel which comes off fairly easily. So right there is the pilot light burner, which always stays running. I will manually close the relay and we'll see the burners light up. And then I'll open the relay, remove that screwdriver, or turn the switch off. And it turns back off back to the that pilot light burner, which always remains running. And that's just one of the things I love about these old gas boilers. You know, this is going on 50 years old. The newer systems are ready to only last like 15 years before you need to replace them. And the home inspector, and I've had, uh, you know, heating, plumbing folks in here uh, that have worked on this years ago. They say, you know, do not replace this if you can help it. You know, you can replace all the components, which these are, these are all newer components for the most part. They say only when the boiler itself cracks and breaks, you know, inside here, that's when you're going to need to replace it. Otherwise, just keep it going. It's really not worth it to go to the high energy efficiency when those are not built to last like these older boilers were. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.